Yeah, I think let's get started, uh, Alex. <clears throat> okay, let's do this. Um, so in terms of some general housekeeping from the, um, from the previous call, the end user survey was, was sent to Cheryl to be, um, to be forwarded onto the end user forum. Um, we have an end user forum um, meeting uh, booked in for the 9th of July, um, which is after the, the KubeCon in, in China. Um, we will, um, we had, uh, we had the CNCF SIG charter um, forwarded on to the, to the talk for discussion. Um, and my understanding is that, they, that the talk we're going to, to review with a look on voting on this prior to KubeCon. Um, is that your impression too, Quinton? Sorry, I lost my unmute button. Uh, yes, I, I believe that it's all kind of happening. Um, and they, yes, that, that is the plan. I'm not aware of any obstacles. Excellent. Okay, so so in terms of uh, in terms of uh, next steps, um, we were discussing um, options about uh, putting together some uh, use cases um, using cloud native storage. Um, we obviously uh, we obviously wanted to get uh, feedback from the end user community, which we'll be getting through the survey. Um, but in the meantime, I just wanted to poll this group uh, to see if there were any specific use cases um, that you felt strongly about or that you had the resources or, or, or some, some basic information to, to be able to move forward as well, so that we could have a list of those uh, for consideration. Um, do you know when uh, we expect to get some results from the survey? Um, I put the deadline for the 16th so that we can get the we can get the summary of the results before KubeCon. Oh, okay, that's good. Um, so I'll 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 kick off I'll kick off um, this concept so sort of the idea for the use cases myself. So I I had an idea that um, you know even the priorities of the end users aside, um, I think it would be useful to cover um, a use case document for some common options for for volumes. So, sort of covering the the ephemeral um, volumes, the the local volume uh, support that's been uh, recently introduced in, in Kubernetes, and persistent storage from. Uh, when using a, uh, a storage provider to cover, you know, some some different use cases or, or different um, uh, applications that kind of fit to those three types of volumes, um, because this is quite possibly a, a fairly common question we get asked um, at Storage OS. But I'm I'm open to sort of hear uh comments from, from anybody else on the team as to whether they think this is a good idea or whether they would rather we did something else uh, i was just so wondering the, oh sorry carry on oh, i was just saying that uh, so the uh the block roblox board is available now so uh, maybe you want to know some use case for that Okay. Yep. The um, the question I had was: uh, Is information not perhaps already obviously publicly available? I would imagine with the release of a local volume, for example, there's presumably a blog post that explains what the use cases are for them, um, or or is that not the case? Uh, yeah, there was a blog post with the with the feature release. I was I was thinking, um, I was thinking more something along the lines of you know, this is this is you know this is these are some examples of what you could use ephemeral storage for. These are some examples for 
um, the local or, or the Roblox store. And these are some examples of when you'd, when you'd want, you know, an, an external persistent uh, system or, or service um, to kind of help people with, with just general guidance on these things. Oh, again, I mean, I haven't actually been following the blog posts associated with the releases of those features, but I, I would have imagined that was already covered. If it's not already covered, then, then yeah, it probably falls upon us to clarify that. Okay. I, I, it, it would I, seem I, like a shortcoming in the actual release. Okay, so uh, I think there are some blog posts have more uh, use case cover, like, like for example, the local voting, I think there is a pretty good blog covering use case actually from, I think Uber is using that or something. Um, but for the uh, real blog support, the blog post doesn't really cover a clear use case. So I think that one maybe we can see if we can you know, add more to that. At the risk of getting sort of overly philosophical, I wonder if we shouldn't, um, I mean, if, if projects are releasing features without a clear explanation of what the feature is intended for. Uh, well, I, it, it did say that, I'm just saying that, uh, I was more thinking, do we want to look at, you know, if user, you know, an actual user is using that for something, right? More, yeah, you know, okay. add, rather than just say, okay, this can be used for some. Okay, no, that makes sense. And and actually, I had a similar thought stroke comment uh, when Alex was uh, soliciting agenda items yesterday. I think this word use case has kind of become uh, overloaded um, <laughs> in the sense that, and maybe we need to come up with a new, with different words, but in my mind, there's like, specific user has specific you know um project where they did something and other people might be interested in understanding like what exactly they did and why they did it and whether it succeeded etc now i don't know if we call that thing a use case or or something else I th my, my sense is that we probably need to call that something else and then there is you know in a more generic sense like what are the categories of use case for this feature um, what kinds of things, what are the properties that you're looking for? You know, a more generic kind of description of something. And, and that also, I think, currently gets referred to as a use case. And, and maybe that's confusing. Right. I, so, so I think I think that's a good distinction. I, I don't know what to call the, the latter one, where we're talking about something for, from an end an actual say end user, this is how we did something. Um, I was I was thinking about this specifically because it's something we've, um, it's something I've certainly come across and, and some of the, the people I meet at meetups have come across where different classes of volumes, for example, um, are used incorrectly for different use cases. So for example, um, a, a classic example of this is the, the official etcd operator um, actually uses ephemeral storage. So if all the nodes have a power supply failure at the same time, you will actually just lose all of your data because that's the way that the operator is designed. Um, and, and I think it would kind of it would benefit a lot of people to, to avoid these sort of stumbling blocks and to sort of adopt some of these cloud technologies quicker. Um, if we just said, these are the types of volumes that you can have, just because you're, you have a PV from, from, a, from a CSI driver or a native driver, doesn't mean it's going to be persistent, doesn't mean it, it, it is going to fail over and all these sorts of things. These are some of the, the, the categories and therefore, you know, use them accordingly kind of thing. And I, and I was, I was thinking about it in terms of, you know, short circuiting some of the pain points that, that users are finding when they're using the, the official repos. Yeah, okay, that, that, that makes sense. And I think that that kind of stuff falls very squarely in, in our uh, set of responsibilities in the sense that we, you know, across multiple projects and, and across multiple, uh, yeah, uh, things, uh, we, we need to sort of, provide a comprehensive understanding to the end users. Um, however, when it comes to a specific feature release, for example, local ephemeral volumes for Kubernetes or whatever, 
one would hope that those are described by the Kubernetes project. And, and in cases where they're not, where we don't think they are sufficiently described, we should, you know, help them fix that and, and not do it again in the future. Otherwise, we're going to end up documenting all of the CNCF projects, <laughs> you know, in the yeah. ending, which I don't think is our job and I don't think we want to be doing. No, no, I, I completely agree. I, I, I'm not suggesting, and just to clarify, I'm not suggesting that we do that. Um, yeah. I'm suggesting okay. that we cool. provide kind of uh, more about summary um, comparison kind of docs so that people mm -hmm. can choose the right technology rather than sort of sort out, sift through yeah, lots sense. of feature releases. Uh, actually, just as a slight diversion, I, I don't know if I understood you correctly, but if I did, then you were saying that that etcd using local ephemeral storage is uh, a bad idea. And I think that's not true. So I just want to make sure we understood each other and, and yeah, whether there was some confusion there. Yeah, so, 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 so this, this came up, for example, um, the other day when, when I was discussing this at a, a meetup, mm -hmm. um, the, the actual Helm chart today installs, um, it's, it can, runs up etcd on ephemeral storage, which basically means when the pod dies, that instance of etcd goes away. Now, yeah. you know, if you're running, as, in, as many users do, with say just three nodes or something like that, it's quite easy to get into a situation where you lose quorum or you lose all of the three pods at the same time. Um, and that basically means that there's no data to recover. There's no snapshots. There's no backups. There's, it, it's just gone. Um, so, you know, there are certainly arguments for whether you, you know, you want to take snapshots if you're using ephemeral or whether you want to use something else like, for example, the local volumes, um, because at least then you can restart the pod and recover the data. Oh, I understand. So your, your distinction was between ephemeral versus local rather than uh, local versus remote. Correct, yes, yes. Oh, I understand. Sorry, I wasn't actually aware that there was a distinction there. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, I was just, uh, the, the reason I asked was, was there is a perception that storing etcd data on remote disks is a good idea and, and that it's a bad idea to use local volumes. And I'm not sure that that does uh, sufficient <laughs> justice to the debate about the two options. Um, I, I completely agree, yeah. Okay, no, that's good. And now I understand your point. <clears throat> cool, all right. Um, so, so in that case, um, I, can, I can potentially maybe sort of put a, a, put a document outline together to cover, to cover this, and then maybe we can work collaboratively to split up different sections of the document. Hopefully this can be a nice short document that we can turn around, that we can turn around quickly. It's not gonna be something as meaty as the white paper. Yeah, sounds like an excellent idea. So just to be clear, is your, is your thinking to do it like a kind of a Q and A, you know, should I, should I use these kind of block stores or these kind of block stores, you know, a bunch of questions and answers, or, or are you thinking of it as something? Yeah, like some, some, something like that with, with okay. a paragraph on each type and, and, a, and a comparison table or something, and that's it. So that it's, it's kind of like a two page um, reference article, if you wish. Okay, for, for a very specific kind of pair of alternatives. Yeah. Uh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, because the, um, the white paper tended to sort of try and sketch all the possible alternatives and and pros and cons of each, which which tends to be a much more difficult thing to give a clear answer to. So it's, it tends to be vague in, in a lot of areas by yeah. necessity. So you okay? That makes sense. All right. So so we can we can kick that off. Um, the the uh, are there are there any um, sort of uh, other areas that, that the team feels strongly about or would like to to um, to think about or to, to try drafting? Alex, on the same lines that you mentioned about the local preview and ephemeral storage, does it also make sense to write something on uh, hyperconverged storage versus remote storage? Um, 
then it would be a good option to use one way or the other. Yes, that is, um, that is a good idea actually. Um, it is something we touch on in the white paper and, and we have asked the end users about that in, in, the, in the survey, something we touch on there. So yeah, that, 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 might, that, that could be another good option. That's a good idea. And we can probably pull in the responses from the end user survey and feed into this um, FAQ kind of an article or the uh, same same format that you are using for ephemeral purposes. Yep, absolutely. I, I happened to to read that section of the paper recently, um, and it's fairly brief. But I I'm, I guess what I'm wondering is how much more there is to say. Um, my, my recollection of what the paper says is essentially um, the pros are that you have, you know, uniform uh, commodity hardware with a converged approach. Um, and it's sort of more flexible, but on the other hand, um, your capacity provisioning and performance impact between your compute loads and your, your storage loads uh, gets mixed up. Um, so, which, which I think was a very good summary of the, my understanding of the pros and cons. So I, I guess what I'm wondering is what more do we think we need to add to that? It's not, it's not obvious to me that there's anything that's not answered by those questions, but maybe you have other ideas. I was more looking from the uh, end user use cases. Uh, what are the scenarios where they are going for one option or the other? Uh, is it more like an edge use case where they don't have uh, access to the remote storage or is it like an NVMe uh, kind of a devices which are available on the nodes? No, just trying to list them. So uh, I kind of understand what Quentin is saying. I, I, I think we covered the basics in the in the white paper quite well. Um, what would be useful is to try and capture um, some of the some of the motivations from um, from the end users and for some you know specific different uh, uh, use case examples I guess so so just by by example by word of example sort of um, I I I have come across different users who have chosen different topologies for reasons completely separate to um, you know, some of the technical aspects that we cover in the white paper. So for example, um, commercial reasons are one thing, uh, you know, where, the, where perhaps they're looking for, say, optimized storage nodes versus optimized compute nodes. But other reasons, um, which are fairly more common, are actually operational and, and sort of day two operations type thing. So for example, they might have a higher rate of change on their um, on their compute nodes, especially if they're running with managed services in the in, in cloud environments, um, then they may want on their storage nodes, for example. I, I don't know whether that actually merits an entire paper or an entire document. Um, I don't know, open to debate. I mean, I guess we can we can we can put this on our we can put this on our list um, and use the information from the survey to confirm one way or the other. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. Anything else? Well, the other one is the the raw block that I mentioned. I think it would be good to see. I know it's still relatively new. I'd like to see uh, who is using it and. You know, if they are, uh, they think this is uh, uh, something they need uh, that maybe helps them improve performance versus the the file system mode. But, but this, I think, needs some user input. <laughs> yeah. Because we know in general what is why that is needed, but I'd like to see someone is really using it and say. <laughs> This really helps us. 
Yeah. Um, so I don't think we have uh, that specific question in the question. And maybe this could be a, like a follow up. It, it could be. Do, do you know what, actually? Um, every time I, I, I sort of read about the Roblox support, one of the obvious things that sort of occurs to me is that this, that's actually a neat feature for um, storage systems to actually use, right? Um, uh, you know, I think it's usually for uh, some of the database applications, like SAP actually, they want to have the Roblox for, so that's the, uh, video. that's one of the use cases, but I still want, you know, not to know who is actually using it since it's still <laughs> relatively new. Right. Um, I can't remember whether we had that in the survey. You, you, you do you think it's not in the I survey? Don't think it's, I don't think this is a, we just say the general, you know, blocks, are you using blocks through the system or not? Because this is very specific. This is a, like a one mode in Kubernetes, right? So the, for, the, for the PVC, right? So, so we don't have something that specific in our survey yet. Our survey is kind of a general. Well, it's certainly something we can bring up um, when we when we speak to the end users on the mental Oh, so on the, yeah, that's a good idea. So that is after they have done the survey and the, after the KubeCon in Shanghai. Yeah, that'd be good. Okay. Anything so one else? Other thing, yeah, one, one last item, um, just sort of brain dumping is that as a SIG, as we transition into a SIG, one of our responsibilities is to, well, the, the two things that we have not historically done and that we will be responsible for in the future are uh, project health. Um, so all the CNCF storage projects, um, just checking in with them, making sure that they're happy and uh, healthy and, and whether there's anything that needs to be brought to the attention of the TOC. And then the other area is uh, identifying what we believe to be gaps in the storage uh, portfolio of, of the CNCF. So I don't think either of them are like super burning urgent, like need to be done in the next couple of weeks, but, but we do need to make sure those get on our agenda uh, and we have a plan going forward for how we're going to address them. That was good. Yes. Agreed. So yeah, maybe you can just put that on the sort of agenda for the future, um, etc. cetera. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, one other, um, one other uh, project or initiative that, um, uh, that I thought might be helpful, but I'm, I am looking for guidance here because I, I do understand that this could be potentially controversial. So um, I'd, I'd be interested in putting together some uh, guidance um, for how we actually measure some of the different attributes that we defined in the white paper. So for example, you know, something like performance might be a good place to start with something that's quantifiable. But as we all know, benchmarking is notoriously complex and subjective. Um, but I was kind of wondering whether it would be useful to put together, you know, something like a, a, a sample um, set of either benchmarks or tooling or, um, or even just maybe a standardized sort of automation framework for some of this stuff, um, such that end users can easily um, use that framework as a, as a starting point, say, for when they're comparing um, different cloud providers or, or, or different um, uh, storage systems um, within their environment. And, you know, the idea being that we start with performance, but perhaps um, move it to uh, other areas where we have, um, for example, things like availability or something like that. So, for example, I know the, the open EBS guys have, have um, a framework which, which perhaps could fit the bill in terms of doing sort of chaos monkey type testing with, with these type of storage systems. 
Um, but I was wondering if, if we could kind of maybe put an effort to sort of uh, standardize or bring together a number of people from the community to kind of put a, a together for, for I think uh, I think the general principle is very good I think having a place where users can go and uh, find a set of tools that we believe to be useful for this kind of stuff and maybe even some uh, performance revo results that we've done uh, on you know either CNCF projects or, or general other projects uh, uh, other I mean, in the extreme, possibly even products, although that gets even more controversial. Um, my reservation is whether we have the bandwidth and the longevity to, you know, I don't want us to build tools that we don't maintain over time. So if we're gonna to build tools, we need to actually sign up for maintaining them properly over time. And I don't think as a SIG, we have necessarily the infrastructure to do that properly. Uh, and the same goes for performance. Um, you know, if we publish performance figures for version X of product Y or project Z, um, we, we probably implicitly are sort of signing up to do that, you know, periodically uh, and fill in all the gaps. And I'm, I'm a little nervous that we might be biting off more than we can chew there. So, so I, I completely agree. Uh, and, and, and just to be clear, I'm not proposing that we, that we, um, that we sort of publish results because I agree with you, they'll, they'll get out of date very quickly. And, and it's, uh, and apart from the fact that, you know, we don't really want to get into sort of a, a comparison of products ourselves. What I'm, what I'm talking more about is, is kind of providing, uh, uh, say, say for example, you know, there might be two or three tools like, FIO and Sysbench and a couple of other things, for example, that, that measure performance for particular use cases. Um, but if we if we tied it together with um, some simple automation framework with some sort of default known good values um, that make it easy for somebody to just say, okay, here's my storage class. I'm going to run up this um, this benchmark. Um, and I can do the same thing for some different storage classes or some different cloud providers. And it gives the end users effectively the ability to kind of try out this stuff themselves. Then we kind of give an unbiased, standardized way of people to compare numbers between different systems themselves. And if they want to publish stuff, well, then that's kind of up to them to publish stuff. But, but we're not actually publishing it as a SIG. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I would propose that as a first step, we we just uh, survey the landscape of available tools um, that can be used for these kind of measurements and perhaps publish a white paper just saying, you know, these are the ones we uh, looked at, these are the pros and cons of the various tools, these ones measure these things and these other ones measure these other things. And here's, you know, a couple of sample runs maybe of, of some of them, just so that, you know, if somebody's wanting to do performance measurements on storage systems, they, they can read this paper and at least get pointed in the right direction. Um, that, that seems like a useful first step. Um, again, the, the idea of building automation implies that we maintain that stuff and keep it working. Um, and these things, you know, they, they, they presumably that automation is going to rely on underlying tools, which change over time and, you know, may or may not run on particular operating system platforms, etc. And that's where I don't want us to like implicitly sign up to maintain a bunch of software that we don't actually have the people or the bandwidth to do properly. Alex, in that uh, context, some of the users actually um, gave links to some benchmarking tools they use. Uh, maybe in the upcoming uh, uh, meetup, I can probably present some of those links and kind of demo how they use it. Yeah, uh, yeah that, that, that would be great. I, I, so I like the idea of starting small. We, we can start small with, um, with a, a, a survey of some of the tools and, and provide some so this guidance on which tools to use. Um, and then I guess, depending on the uptake we get from the community, we can, we can make a call as to whether we want to, to take that further. I, I completely sort of agree with you, Quentin. We 
should not, we must not bite off more than we can chew. Um, but I kind of feel that with potentially dozens of storage vendors and companies who are sort of sponsoring this and could be interested in the SIG, we might actually get um, we might actually get a bit of a community around this because I, I suspect that this is a common problem for end users and the sort of storage community alike. Oops, I think we lost you, Alex. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, now we can. Oh, I'm sorry. No, so I, I was I was just saying that I I think we may find that um, that sort of there's a bit of a drive from both end users and the the, the vendors and uh, and the community around the SIG that uh, that we may find there's there's quite a bit of uptake in this. So I like the idea of just starting small with the putting a, a dock with a, a landscape of the available tools and then kind of taking it further based on uptake. Yeah, I totally agree. And, and I think um, the, the general principle of making real hard data easily accessible to users is, is very, uh, I strongly support that. Because I think, as you point out, you know, we wave our hands and we say that you know, these kind of stores are faster than these kind of stores or more consistent or whatever. Um, but I don't think people appreciate quite how many orders of magnitude difference there are between some of these things. Um, and when, when we sort of make statements that when you use the wrong stack of storage technologies, or not necessarily the wrong one, but if you use a particular uh, combination of layers in your storage system, this is the result in terms of performance or consistency or whatever the property might be. And, and it is like, you know, X number of orders of magnitude different than, than a different approach. I don't think people always appreciate quite how big the differences are. Yep. Cool. I'll stop babbling on that. <laughs> so, um, so from, from my Part, that was uh, that was all the things I had on the on on the agenda. Um, does anybody have any other business? Not from my side. Uh, this is our Mr. Vegas. I was listening at the call, and um, you probably didn't introduce myself. I'm a product manager at Dell EMC. Oh, hello, welcome. Hello. Cool, okay. So if, if we've covered everything, I think we get 20 minutes back on this. Anybody has anything else they want to cover? No, sounds good. Uh, I assume someone's gonna write up some meeting notes. I think they're kind of empty at the moment. We Yes. Get a note taker for each meeting in future. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll type them up now. All right, thanks. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. All right, all. Thank you.